I tire of this troublesome life. Out of the bag attack! Yo, what's up guys? It's the Insane Game Freaks. Get some money, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't breathe, fuck. Okay. <laughs> So yo, what's up guys? It's been a while since I've done one of these kind of videos where I'm standing up and having a conversation with you and not sitting down talking about Pokemon because this is the My Hero video. I wanted to talk about the Overhaul arc and because the anime has finished up the Overhaul arc, I literally don't have to worry about spoiler warnings other than if you're not caught up with season 4 as of the date of this video release, don't watch this video. Other than that, the arc has been essentially adapted. Everything is in the arc. So spoilers abound for an arc that is now fully animated and has been in the manga for like, what, over a year or two now? Um, so, to first give you some, some background, I have my issues with My Hero, but I would still say objectively, I still think this is my favorite arc in the manga. Uh, I don't think it's the... I don't. It's one of those things where I don't necessarily love it, but it is my. I think it's the best arc in the manga. Other arcs are, have certain things over it, but I'm talking about as a complete package. I think it does a good job for what it is. That being said, I don't think it's perfect by any means, and has a couple of flaws that are pretty fucking annoying to me. And if you've been a fan of this channel, or if you know me, you know exactly what my issues are. But for those who don't, I want to express them and kind of go into them because I feel like some of these issues, some of the issues that I think My Hero currently has kind of stem from this arc. I think this arc kind of starts some of these problems. Now, to quickly go over the stuff I like, I love pretty much the, the Sun Eater, Fat Gum, Kirishima. Um, I even like the Lock Rock, and I like Chisaki as a villain. I like the way Shigaraki deals with him at the end of the arc. I like the Toga twice dynamic. I even I like the whole idea they use with Aerie. The major, like I said, if you if you had to break it into percentages, I probably would say like eighty percent, seventy five, eighty percent of the arc I enjoy. But the parts I don't, fuck. So, as I said, I actually enjoy the very end of the arc with to with uh, uh, Chisaki and uh, Shigaraki. Uh, which is, I didn't realize how close their names kind of rhyme. But that's besides the point. I like that ending. It's kind of fucked up, but it makes sense considering at the beginning of the arc, you killed one of Shigaraki's men and you took off one, the arm of another. Like, and then you fucking, like, bullied him into like joining your cause in a way like i kind of figured shigaraki comes off as one of them type of motherfuckers that's like petty as shit and so the ending you get with shigaraki and chisaki makes perfect sense in context what i don't really like is probably that middle section between when mirio pretty much after mirio finds and starts fighting chisaki up until Deku beats Chisaki. Those are like, that's like the section of time that a lot of the shit I don't care for happens. The first thing that I think it's 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 ironic that it's minor in the arc, but it's annoying in the long run, uh, is the fact that for some reason we get these we get uh, I think the I think the Fat Gum Squad gets like the most love in this arc, which is Fat Gum Chisaki. I mean Fat Gum Kirishima and uh uh. I can't pronounce his name. Tamakaji, I think it is, or Sun Eater. I think they get the most love and development as an overall group. But the group that gets the least amount of love and development is the girl team. And that's what I'm calling them. I would call them by their hero names because I know them. But I hate the fact that for some reason this arc actively refuses to develop any of the girls other than, I guess you would get, say, Aerie. Like, Uraka. Sue, Nedri, Ryuko, none of them trick, none of them girls get any love whatsoever in the arc. They are, like when they first storm that, the, the Yakuza stronghold, they're fighting the big guy at the, at the beginning of the damn arc, or the beginning of that rush, and they stay fighting that dude the whole fucking time. And the reason why this is infuriating to me is not only because 
you for some reason the girls are all singled out here. Like they're all like hell Toga. Toga's the only other girl besides Aria that gets any development in this arc. And it's not even really development in this arc. She just gets screen time. Which is more than these bitches get, which is stupid. So fucking dumb. I don't understand what his issue was with that. Especially when you went and developed Mario and uh, Taka. I can't. Sun Eater. I'm sorry. I can't pronounce his name consistently. You you developed Sun Eater and, and Lemillion, but you for some reason didn't develop Nadri, who was also one of the big three. We don't know even. I think even in the manga to this day, we know nothing of her backstory. We know what her ability is, and it's played down like a motherfucker. That she essentially can shoot, like, energy beams, but, like, they're slow. And she can't do it for long. I'm like, how are you considered one... Like, she's the only person in that group of big three that you have no idea why she's even considered as such. And I don't know anything about her backstory. Now, granted, there's a chance here Koshi could use that later in the manga, and if I wanted to give him credit, he might do that. But it's frustrating when she's so underplayed. It'd be a different story if she was like one shotting or putting or, or doing like single handed work against this one guy. I could give her more credit then, even if you don't explain the backstory or nothing. But bruh, you had Uraka, Sue, Najiri, and Ryuko all in this bitch fight this one guy. And the dude's ability is to like suck up energy when he touches somebody to get stronger. And to be fair, they beat him once, but then he powers up, and that seems to be, like, too much for them. Which, realistically, just seemed like a plot hole way of being like, oh, they can't do anything once they get involved with the, the main fight. Which is what they did. So it makes all of them look weak. It's, uh, <sighs> which is funny, because I can make the same argument. Actually, I think this whole arc does that. Fucking Rock Lock gets stabbed easily, Aizawa gets stabbed easily, Ryuko doesn't really do anything, she gets her energy sapped and that's it, Night Eye fucking dies, what is this shit? <laughs> the only, the only pro hero who was putting in some work was Fat Gum, what kind of shit is this? When all the kids were out here doing more work than all these adults, so that's, that's it, that's just a, that's an issue I've run across just talking about it. But yeah, the girl situation just frustrates me because you not only do you play down a pro hero and one of the big three, which that got boosted up by seeing Lemillion and Sun Eater put in some work, and Nature is like, I can shoot energy beams, but they come out kind of slow. And you're like, so fucking stupid. So that's like my first fucking problem that I think extends throughout the manga because he's, he's still doing that. Where most of the girls don't get any love or respect uh, in, in any huge way. It's always like these super minor moments. And Uraraka at this point is relegated to love uh, sickness for like a good 50 to 100 chapters. Which is kind of fucking annoying. People want to talk about how... I hate that. Literally, I, that's why I don't understand anyone who champions like My Hero Girls. The only My Hero Girl who has like legitimate, really good development is like Toga. And even Toga's isn't anything crazy. Or maybe like Toga's and Momo. Toga and Momo are like the only two. And Momo's is pretty based around she's really smart but she's insecure. Toga, I have an ability that makes me kind of, that has me kind of fucked up. But I still want to have an enjoyable life like everybody else. It's not like, <laughs> it's not, they're not even deep. So it frustrates me that this is the art that really honed it in on me where I'm like, yo, he doesn't. I don't think he wants to develop these chicks at all. But don't throw them in the fucking art then! Stupid! <laughs> the second thing I would say that aggravates me is probably... Is the handling of Night Eye slash Mirio. So, we get Mirio's backstory, which is nothing crazy. But it sets his character up. And we're introduced to him at the beginning of this arc. Actually, at the end of the last arc, going into the beginning of this arc... We're introduced to Night Eye and his whole issues with Might, Might, uh, All Might. I wanted to say Might Guy. Their names are too fucking close. Don't blame me. I'm an old school anime fan. I grew up on that Naruto shit, alright? I'm weak. Don't judge me. <laughs> but the point I'm making is, is that, like, that dynamic, that dynamic, they, 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 like, those two characters 
get fucked the most in this arc, and I kind of don't get the point. So, ever since you find out what Night Eye's ability is, which is essentially to see the future, uh, and you realize that was the basis behind why him and All Might had to part ways because he couldn't see All Might kill himself even though he had seen his future. Uh, but he was still cared, and he still cared about him and still respected him, but he was trying to find ways behind the scenes to, like, save his life but couldn't come up with anything. So it kind of got into this whole destiny cannot be changed. So, of course, Deku's whole thing is, I'm the one who's going to smash Destiny. Now, if you are an old school anime fan, you know this arc was done in Naruto way fucking better. It also was, was uh, it became a contradiction in Naruto too. Which is the fact that, like, Naruto does, the, Ned, Naruto and Neji's interaction is that whole concept. But I think done way fucking better. And I, although, for some reason, it also results in the same goddamn thing. The person who is convinced that destiny can actually be changed, for some reason, ends up dying. That's weird. At least in Naruto, there was a huge gap in time before it happened. And, and fucking... <laughs> in My Hero, you killed him in the same arc he was introduced! And it was so dumb. It was, And I, I think I was more frustrated with his death, not because of... Well, for him, it, for one, he's like, you can change destiny as he dies. So part of his future telling, because he says it before it even happens, that me and Midoriya will lose our lives in the fight with Chisaki and he will get away with Eri. That was the future he saw. Well, part of that future was still true because you died. <laughs> but he's like, I guess destiny can be changed and then dies. What kind of bullshit is that? It was weak with Neji and it was weak here. The only thing that helped Neji is that, hey, Neji didn't die in the same fucking arc. It happened. And, and two, uh, at least he had opportunities to kind of, like, expand as a character. Nai is introduced, teaches Midoriya very little, because he doesn't get a chance to, and then fucking dies after being convinced that maybe you are worth being, you are worthy of being his successor. Like, what the fuck? That's just, and then, and what makes it even more frustrating is that you did it to fuck with, Muriel got fucked in this arc, a hundred percent. The man lost his mentor. The man lost his powers. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what are we doing? Why? F and you fuck with this. W you fuck with this one character. Mario is introduced to be this powerhouse, but it's like, well, we can't have him hanging around. It's almost like Hirokoshi was like, well, if we have him hanging around for future arcs, he'll become a problem. Like, it's easy to give Aizawa, which seems to be the running gimmick in every arc he's in moving forward. That you give Aizawa by being like, well, we can cheat his eye power by waiting until he blinks. Like, once you figure out that gimmick for Aizawa, he's not hard to deal with. Which is fucking stupid. His cousin's quirk's problem is the fact that he has to blink. Ugh. It's so dumb. Uh, but it's, but like, I, it frustrates me that you did Mirio so dirty. You killed his mentor, and then you robbed him of his powers. And then you show that backstory where he worked his motherfucking ass off. But the reason why people aren't like mad mad is primarily because Aerie is a plot device now. She's going to be a plot MacGuffin used to like give Mirio his t powers back at some point in the story. Like, as a, as a, like, I hate when you introduce characters who have like broken ass abilities that early in the series. And I mean like broken in the sense that like, it essentially makes me not be concerned about any future situations because they have that ability. Now, some people would argue Black Clover has that problem with the anti-magic, but, like, Asta himself is just human. So, like, and it's all in the swords. Like, so if you don't, so if Asta isn't holding the sword, it won't work. Ares, literally, it's like, well, Ares' ability com comes and goes at random, and she can't control it currently. So, essentially, she's just going to become a plot device that if anything fucking happens... She can just, once she figures out her ability, she'll just be, she'll, be, you know, it's, it's like the Dragon Balls. It's like, well, here's a cheap way of making any threat in the series seem insignificant because, well, there she goes. Like, <laughs> you're like, bitch, this is so stupid. And then the third thing is probably the Deku versus overall fight. Oh, and I guess the other thing about the Mario stuff that aggravates me is not only did you do all that, but in the anime... The section where he fights without his powers for like a good five minutes. 
You turn into a motherfucking slot. How dare you? He had already gotten screwed. I knew what was coming in the anime. So I'm like, bro, all you had to do was just properly animate his fight. And they wouldn't do it. He gets a bunch of those still shots. Or like the majority of the characters are frozen. But the camera's tilting. And there's like effects on like certain parts of the body. And that's it. Like he doesn't even get proper animation love during his last legit fight for a while. And I'm like, eat a dick. Bones, you had one job. Fuck that. That Deco shit looks cool. But I would have thoroughly preferred you give Mirio the shit he deserved instead of having him getting fucked on some nonsense. Which is, guess what? He gets fucked on some nonsense. Also, the fact because that whole arc, that whole situation where, like, he saved, he protects Aerie, by, even though if he had hit Aerie. It essentially would have ended the plot anyway because that means her own ability would have killed her own... Like, she would have killed her own ability inadvertently. It would have been better if Eri got shot because her ability is a danger because they were trying to abuse her. But of course, we want to see a young girl... Now, I get why Mario does what he does, but considering in the greater scheme of things, it would have made more sense for her to lose her own ability and then Chisaki would have lost all reason, like, Shisaki couldn't use her anymore. That would have made more fucking sense. But because of how the story goes, I get why, but I hate when you present me with a situation where the better answer would have been for her to take the hit that one time, and then she wouldn't even have to deal with that problem. Considering her power caused a lot of trauma and killed her dad inadvertently. Like, that's the kind of, I hate when you do that, show, because I'm like, that would have been the better option. But because it's Mirio, and because I, because he's a hero, of course he's not going to just let a girl get shot if he can help it. If she gets shot and he can't control it, that's one thing. And I get it, it just, it just pisses me off. Yeah. And then the last thing that gets on my nerves is the Deku versus Chisaki fight. Because Chisaki is a really cool fucking villain. You know it isn't cool having a really cool fucking villain, his final fight, or at least as of now, his final fight boiling down to him spouting his ideology and what he thinks, and Deku's response essentially being, if I can't save a little girl, I don't deserve to be a hero. I hate that disconnect with villains. Now, I've mentioned this before, and a lot of people mentioned that like I'm holding it to a standard it doesn't need to go to, which is true, because Naruto did the same concept way better. Where you were, but see, My Hero's a different kind of show, and it's not required to do that. But it frustrates me that you get this backstory in Chisaki, and you understand that although his attentions were good, he was so fucked up in his methods that he forgot basic morality. Which is something that Deku could have showed him. It's like, what he's like, he's like, you, because Chisaki's whole thing was, you guys are so concerned about the little things, you're not seeing the big picture. Deku's response could have been, it's those little things that make up the big picture. His response could have been something along those lines. Nothing crazy, just been like, those little things is what made your big picture. The reason why you, were, you even got to this point was due to those little things. That, that's such a basic fucking thing you could have done. That they just said, nah, we're just going to have a time about if I can't protect one little girl. And you're like, bitch. The animation was fucking, was God tier. No hate whatsoever on the animation. But I'm just like, when when the, when the shit's right there, it's not, it's not like, it's not like in other shows where the shit, it would have been so out of reach to fucking do it that, it, that it, there's no point in it. It's not like that. It literally was, I turned the corner. Boom, there it is. That's Deku only. I did not even talk about Deku. Because it seems stupid to me. This also gets into my issue with Deku in general. That Deku's whole thing is to be the greatest hero ever. Because that's the premise of the fucking story. But we still got him out here. But essentially he's just turning into another All Might. Because also, just side note. I hate the fact that we've essentially gotten rid of the ability. Getting, got rid of Deku's like main ability. Which was that even though he was quirkless, he used his head. This man doesn't use his head barely at all anymore. 
um, and it frustrates me. The, the, the extent of him using his head in this particular fight is Airy rewinds time at a quick-ass pace. So if I continually hurt myself, then then it'll it'll cancel each other out essentially. Meaning she'll still be rewinding me, but I'll be taking so much damage. That's where she'll have to rewind me from, and then I can still fight and beat the shit out of Chisaki. So as I this art doesn't even do anything for Deku in terms of controlling his ability. He's literally allowed to just go at one hundred percent from jump because fuck it. We need you to have a cool ass fight, an all might kind of fight at the end. Where it's like on some superhero bullshit. I just, I, it's these things that aggravate, it's that, it's literally that final section that frustrates me. As soon as Mario is, starts fighting Chisaki, like during that section up until he, Chisaki is defeated, it's just like, dude, this shit could have been so much better. It's so frustrating. I'm partially even, fr I mean, I can understand the Chisaki thing. About him losing his arms and Shigaraki wanting him to suffer, I hope thematically that comes at, that comes back to bike, bite Shigaraki on the ass where it's like you did all this and now you're gonna pay for it. Like I hate when I, I watch my hero and I'm like I could have there are like better things that could happen here, and I bet they won't do it and it frustrates me. Like I bet they wouldn't reuse Shisaki later in, in a later arc, even though he can't use his hands for his knowledge and for what he could do. To fuck Shigaraki over, even though he can't use his arms, but because there was no development of his character between his interaction with Deku, that shit won't happen, and it frustrates me. I it's uh, I like this arc, but god damn it, those things suck. So I'm curious if you guys agree or disagree. Thoughts or comments in the comment section below. How'd you feel about it being animated? Still think animation wise, it was a hundred percent solid. Up until the the Mario shit's like the only blemish I have with the show. The way they handle the Mario five minutes of fighting without his quirk frustrates the fuck out of me. Everything else was fine, animation wise. And I hate that it just boiled down to another Deku getting emotional and punching things again. It's not it's not creative. Remember when this guy had fucking skills and used his mind? I went back and watched like the school festival arc. Even his plans back then weren't, like, crazy good. But goddamn, at least he was thinking. Now it's just like, if I keep punching things and, and, and Aerie keeps healing me as I punch, then I'll be okay. And it's like, fuck you. You were better than that, you piece of shit. Fuck. Leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. This has been your boy Schizomatic. And remember... You're not having any fun if you can't go a little bit crazy. Hee hee hee.